Hello everyone, my name is Michael Llewell and I'm one of the medical directors for the um, Orange Transport Medicine program in Ontario. With me today is Mike Paddle. I am also one of the medical directors with the Orange uh, Transport program. And uh, previously both of us worked for the Southwest Ontario Regional Base Hospital program so you may recognize our names from there. Um, thanks for having us today. We want to be able to take a few moments to talk about medical scene call and the air ambulance utilization standard, which is listed in the basic life support patient care standards or the BLS PCS. So uh, first thing is to briefly overview of our objectives today. So we're going to review the operational and clinical guidelines of the air ambulance utilization standard, also referred to as the AAUS. Specific, uh, then we'll specifically uh, touch on the medical scene call piece associated with that. We're going to work on the interpretation or discuss the interpretation of the most appropriate hospital as referenced in the air ambulance utilization standard. And finally, we're going to work, we're going to talk about a specific example, which is uh, medical scene calls for STEMI patients. Excellent. To be clear, we're not talking about trauma today. So trauma has a very specific indication for a listed on the field trauma triage standard, as well as defined definitions within the BLS PCS for modified scene responses. So we are not talking about trauma today. That is well established. So let's start with the air ambulance utilization standard. So the procedure for the paramedic is to assess the scene response to meet one of the operational criteria. So there are four operational criteria that we're going to talk about. Um, the first is the land ambulance is estimated to require more than 30 minutes to reach the scene where that medical call is happening. So a long time for the land EMS to get there. Exactly. Okay. The next is that the land ambulance is estimated to require more than 30 minutes to travel from the scene to the closest appropriate hospital, most appropriate hospital, and the air ambulance can reach the scene and transport that patient to the closest mm -hmm. hospital quicker than the land ambulance. And there's that definition of appropriate hospital which we'll be talking about in a bit. Exactly. So it's a long transport time from scene to the closest most appropriate hospital. Exactly. So okay. it's that air ambulance getting there and getting from the scene to that closest most appropriate hospital quicker than the land ambulance. Got it. Third is the estimated response for both land and air is greater than 30 minutes, but approximately equal for the two uh, resources, but the patient needs advanced level of care to be provided during that transport period that's not available in the land service. Okay. And finally, it's the multiple patients, mass casualty or local land resources um, being outstripped for the, for the level of calls that are going on in that region. So Mike, what you're saying then is based on these operational criteria, which can be somewhat confusing and almost uh, difficult to remember, it's about time because really the Correct. air ambulance is not a treatment itself. What it is, it's actually speed. And so what are the clinical conditions by which speed to the, to the most appropriate hospital be of value? And those are sick patients right. with long transport times, either EMS to get you to there or else long response times by EMS. And that's exactly it. And that's where it really comes down to looking at uh, how the air ambulance can make that transport time to the local hospital faster. And what, what is um, lost when we make these standards is that they're provincial. So there's lots of areas in the province, a uh, good area that comes to mind is Kenora, where it is a 90 minute response time for EMS to multiple locations. And then it's a 90 minute transport back. So for a sick patient, you can easily get a helicopter there and get them off that island or get them off that remote location and back to Kenora Hospital well before land EMS can get there. Mm -hmm. So as you wrote the standard, you're trying to figure out who are those time-sensitive sick patients that will benefit from the speed of the air ambulance. Exactly. And I think that is a really important point to remember, Mike. So uh, moving on to the next slide, let's talk about those patient populations. So one is the trauma patients. And as we said in our disclaimer earlier, we are not talking about trauma today. Right. Trauma is a different, uh, is different process altogether. What we're trying to focus on is the medical aspect. So moving on to the next slide, let's talk about sort of what the air ambulance utilization standard says for the patient conditions that uh, we feel there's benefit for this transfer. So when we wrote this standard, we literally sat in a room in Toronto with the Ministry of Health and the Medical Advisory Committee, and we went through who are the time-sensitive patients that we can actually, we think there may be a benefit by, uh, by speeding along with using the um, air ambulance. And we felt that was someone in shock, um, someone with potentially an acute stroke, 
someone with a profoundly altered level of consciousness um, may have an airway emergency, someone in respiratory failure, um, STEMI, which we'll be talking specifically about today. Yep. Um, patients post arrest, not in arrest, but patients post arrest. Exactly. Someone seizing and someone with an unstable airway, as well as some of these surgical um, emergencies that are associated with obstetrics. Exactly. So it's important what we talk about trauma is that in trauma there are things called modified scene responses. What we're going to be talking about specifically, those don't exist with the medical scene calls. Exactly. So it very well could be that for someone with, for instance, altered level of consciousness, if the air ambulance were to respond, they would be taking you to the local hospital because there is no auto except to Toronto or auto except to London for someone with an altered LOC. Exactly. They're going to the local hospital to be stabilized, you know, and I think that's the key piece. So why don't we get into just some of the logistics associated Super. with a, a medical scene call from, from an air ambulance perspective. So on the next slide, we'll talk about that. What you have to consider is that for medical scene call logistics, most of the time you're going to be calling after you've arrived on scene and made patient contact and assessed the patient condition and decided that it potentially requires care that is beyond the level of your local hospital or the and therefore you feel that there's another most appropriate hospital at that point you're going to request that the, an air ambulance through dispatch um, from there they then contact the OCC and request an air response for your patient and those things take time the processes take time so it's going to take a couple of minutes for CAC to contact OCC OCC then has to contact the flight crew for a weather check, which can take a couple of minutes, upwards of 10, 20 minutes, depending on the, the regional geography weather that, that day, night times, day times. And so it can take time for them to get their weather check. Once the weather check is completed, then they have to tow the aircraft out, potentially spool up, take off times, and those can take 10 minutes as well. And then if you look at the regional geography for Southern Ontario, for example, most of our flight times to the various regions are going to be about 35 to 45 minutes of flight time. So you're looking at almost an hour before we can actually arrive on scene from the time you've made contact and decided that this patient potentially has a more appropriate or most appropriate hospital different than their local hospital. So realistically, what's going to happen in these scenarios is you're going to depart scene and arrive at your local area hospital. Once you arrive at your local area hospital, they're going to begin care uh, of the, that patient. And then we are going to arrive sometime later, third, 20, 30, 40 minutes later. And the challenge becomes is that, as we said, there isn't a modified scene call for, for any of these medical conditions. There isn't a modified scene call for an altered mental status patient. So what happens is, is that to, to move them at that point, the local physician then has to get a, a receiving physician to accept the patient for us to transport. Unlike trauma, where we do have those dedicated sort of modified scene criteria that allow us to scoop that patient with uh, the trauma and move them directly to the trauma center. We don't have that for the GCS8 patient who we can't then just scoop and bring them to London or Toronto uh, for their care. And so uh, on the next slide, we kind of highlight this, the, the key part within in the patient transport standard, which is the idea is to get these patients to the closest, most appropriate hospital that can provide the initial medical care or the care for the patient. And in the rewrite of the BLS, what we're seeing is that that is the same sentence that is used over and over again to define the most appropriate hospital. The one that is capable of providing the care apparently required by the patient. So if we go back to the next slide, which says the area utilization standard medical scene calls again, you can see that for someone in shock, so for someone that is having um, acute respiratory failure or altered level of consciousness or someone seizing, the most appropriate hospital will be the closest hospital capable of providing the care that patient requires. Exactly. So on the next slide, let's summarize that specifically about the medical scene calls. Generally for medical scene calls, the area ones, uh, specifically in southwestern Ontario, will often not reach the scene based on the actual timelines. We just physically can't get there before you're in the local hospital. Right. And the, unlike trauma patients, there is no definition within the basic life support patient care standards for a modified scene response. 
Orange can e easily transport these patients as interfacility, but that requires the sending physician to be able to call a receiving facility and physician, get an accepting facility and physician, and then we can then transport that patient as an interfacility. It becomes a bit confusing if all of a sudden we arrive, the physician hasn't assessed the patient, and just because they have an altered level of consciousness or potentially they had been seizing, we can't auto accept them like we can in trauma and move them to a lead trauma hospital. We need to have the sending physician arrange a receiving physician and facility. Exactly. So let's move on to speak about stemming specifically, because I'm sure there's going to be some questions around that and the whole idea of the PCI center. Right. And I think that the, the challenge we're finding with stemming specifically is that people define the most or the closest appropriate hospital capable of providing the care they require at the PCI center. So let's look directly at the basic life support patient care standard a STEMI protocol, the Ontario STEMI Hospital Bypass Protocol, which is listed within the chest pain non-traumatic standard and the basic life support patient care standards. Exactly. Clearly, you have the indications that are there, but more interesting is on the next slide, they're the contraindications. And I would draw you to point C here, and the contraindications listed in the BLS is transport to a hospital capable of providing PCI greater than 60 minutes from patient contact. Well, as we've already talked about based on the timelines themselves listed in the BLS, by the time we spool up, launch, and arrive, and that patient contact is from your, as Land EMS's first patient contact, we physically can't generally get there within 60 minutes, let alone get them to a hospital capable of performing PCI within 60 minutes. Exactly. And I think that is the highlight here within the air ambulance utilization standard and the chest pain non-traumatic standard is the idea of that 60 minute time frame that we're not, we can't make logistically and it therefore is a contraindication. Right. And that is specifically in our discussions with core health seems to be the issue. We can't meet the timelines required by the BLS PCS by using a scene response for STEMI. Exactly. Got it. And so on the next slide, the, the question is, where do these numbers come from? Mm, and so on the next slide, we, we've highlighted the 2019 Canadian Cardiovascular Society's guidelines for the management of ST elevation MI. And in it, they specifically talk about a focus on regionalization and reperfusion strategies. And you'll see that they talk about the 90 to 120 minutes from first medical contact to device deployment. And so that's where you start to see some of the differences in timelines from this and the, um, the BLS patient care standard, because we're not talking from first medical contact to the facility. We're talking first medical contact in these, in the recommendations to device deployment. So that involves patient getting into the lab, getting hooked up, getting the equipment ready and all that kind of stuff. So doing the actual angiogram, finding exactly. the culprit vessel, deploying the stents and opening it up. Exactly. Versus being brought to the closest, most appropriate facility and potentially being thrombolyzed. And then using us as orange potentially to transport you for a rescue plasty or for the patients that are in cardiogenic shock or have other indications to move as an interfacility transport. Exactly. And I think that is the key piece is the idea that what we're looking at is trying to make those timelines and we can't make those timelines right now based on the way they're currently set up. Excellent. Okay. So on to the next slide, let's do a quick just debrief and discussion about those thoughts. Great. Um, so to remember that, you know, we don't have um, formal agreements with interventional cardiologists um, that for the air ambulance utilization standard. So it comes back to the same idea. We don't have bypass criteria like we do for trauma in the STEMI patients, right? So we, from a EMS system, we are governed by the BLS patient care standard. Our interventional cardiologists are governed by their sort of regulatory and, um, and uh, medical literature framework, I so guess. So if we call them, for instance, at Orange, when we respond to a STEMI scene call, we can't say, based on the basic life support patient care standards, Dr. Cardiologist in London or uh, in St. Mary's, you can't, we, we can't, we don't have the ability to automatically accept on their behalf, unlike what we can do with trauma patients. Exactly. So the best way to get them to the closest, most appropriate hospital is to activate the STEMI system um, through that local hospital network as they do, and then we can move them as an interfacility transport. Exactly. As Orange, we also don't know all the different STEMI indications and contraindications across the whole province for every local network. So as we're flying into Ottawa or Toronto or London, or even in the north, we can't actually say, well, this is the indications and, and contraindications, because although the 
Ontario's Standing Protocol listed within the BLSPCS outlines the framework. It also allows for the local variability with regard to each pre-existing standing network to be accommodated. Exactly, and so not only do we so not only do we not have those that set up, but we can't even contact them to figure out if they are the if they meet the indications for that region at that time. So that's part one. Part two is the timelines, which we've already talked about, and remembering that they might not actually because when you call for a scene call, um, Orange is going to send whatever asset we have available that we within the general vicinity. So it may not be the local helicopter that's coming. This it, be Toronto. Be, it could easily be Toronto, depending mm-hmm. on what's going on. And so we and that leads to other issues within the triage system for the air ambulance because they may be on another high priority call. And so it leads to challenges within the system of who to move and when to move and and re-triaging or moving patients around. That's right. And um, the other challenge would be false positive activations because if we can get them to the local hospital to confirm they're in STEMI, that allows that physician to make a decision about lytic versus no versus moving as an interfacility for STEMI, at which point we can become engaged with that sending facility. As a case just a few days ago, we were launched in the middle of the night uh, to Wireton, where we're going to land um, at the airport under IFRs or instrument flight rules. And it's a dangerous thing flying in the middle of the night with IFR and fog. We got halfway there, and by the time we we're halfway there, the patient arrived to the local hospital in Wireton, and I was in communication with that physician, and it wasn't a STEMI. Right. So we actually launched all the way, triage off different calls, got halfway up there, and had to turn around. So having that ability to really confirm STEMI and also manage the patient um, and know it's a, it's a confirmed launch. To move them as an interfacility is generally the way to go. Exactly. So let's move on to our final slide, which is really just a conclusion and bring us sort of back together and focus on a couple of key points that we want to get across. Which first thought, operational logistics in general for air response for medical scene calls should be reserved for those situations where transport times are long to get to the patient or get to the local area hospital. And those are clearly listed in the basic life support patient care standards operational criteria. Exactly. And they're written in general for the purpose of areas of the province where it literally takes a very long time for landing mass to either get there or to transport. Like Armstrong, for example. 180 minutes one way. Exactly. Mass. Great example. Right. Um, unlike trauma, medical scene calls don't have an agreement, uh, a modified scene agreement available for them. So why that's the impact for land EMS is that generally by the time we get there from a, from a time perspective by, by travel as well as launch, you are already in that local eMERGE. Exactly. And then we have no ability to automatically accept that patient and transport them just because they had a seizure or because they have a STEMI or because they have altered level of consciousness. We need to move then as an inter-facility transport where they actually arrange a sending and receiving position. Exactly. And so those are the key points. Remembering that modified scene response agreements can change, right? Timelines can change, and when timelines change, maybe the, the, the timelines in certain geography allow us to meet the guidelines, and when that happens, we develop modified scene agreements with it, That's similar to trauma. Excellent point, Mike. So I think that this is how the current state is now, and defined as by the BLS patient care uh, standards, of that let have to be within a PCI center less than 60 minutes as written in the BLS. So therefore, right now, a modified scene response just doesn't exist for that, or a scene response for STEMI generally is not going to work for that. However, as we move through the new era of EVT and stroke, exactly. as we move potentially with more formalized agreements with STEMI and that window potentially expanding, we may see a change to that. But in current rules following the basic life support patient care standards, this is where we are today. Exactly. So those were the the key points that we wanted to get across. Uh, We want to thank you for taking the time to listen. Um, Certainly there may be some questions from this. And so if there are questions, uh, please feel free to contact us. We're happy to address any questions that you have um, if they come up during, during the day. Thanks for your attention today.